So, okay, so thanks for joining us. We know it's the end of the second day and everybody's probably excited but exhausted. So we're really grateful that you're all here. Yeah. We're going to talk about continuous delivery of Cloud Foundry. So now uh, keeping your cutting edge platform cutting edge, we think Cloud Foundry is the cutting edge platform, of course. So how do you keep it that way once, you've, uh, once you install it? So I'm Cora Iberclyde. I work for Pivotal um, out of New York. I'm a platform architect. I'm Karthik Lunkard. I'm a platform architect as well. I work at Pivotal out of New York as well. So, okay. So the objective that we want to talk about is um, improving the ease, the quality, and the consistency of your platform. Platform meaning not just one Cloud Foundry foundation, but all of your foundations that compose uh, the platform for your enterprise. So this is what's known as a platform lifecycle management experience. And we're going to talk about uh, the angle of continuous delivery. So from we're used to talking about continuous delivery from an application delivery perspective for software development. But uh, we want to take a look at our platform with Cloud Foundry as from an operations perspective as this is the software that we're delivering to the enterprise. So we want to apply the same continuous delivery principles to the installation and uh, maintenance of the uh, foundations themselves. Um, this is one piece of the puzzle of, of making the whole platform lifecycle management experience easy and consistent, but it's an important piece of it. So if we can do it well, if we can do it right, what are the outcomes that we could expect to get out of it? One of the main ones is a consistent configuration and um, there's like a bubble at the bottom. The, a consistent configuration and version parity across all of our foundations. So there are, there are enterprises that are running tens of foundations, right? There are some that report over 30 or over 40 foundations. So how do you make sure that they're all running the, the, the same version as each other and that you have a consistent configuration across? So that's one important outcome. Also, quick adoption of features and security updates. If you go through all the trouble, as it may, you might have experience today installing Cloud Foundry manually or even um, trying to introduce your own automation. Once you do that and you have an environment that's working well and that's reliable, new features come out and you might start to fall three months behind, six months be behind, and you're no longer offering your developers the latest features of the platform that are available. Or as security patches come out, the more time that it takes you to install those security patches, the wider the gap where you can, might have a security breach, right? We saw recently in, in the US Equifax, uh, there was a struts patch that they didn't install quickly enough and, and they were um, uh, hacked. hacked, exactly. So. By freeing up our uh, platform engineers from these more mundane tasks that really can be automated, we're empowering them and enabling them to work on more creative activities. And finally, it's also a question of having confidence, right? Confidence both in the automation pipelines uh, as a process to be autonomous, to, to um, pull for changes in, the, in product and, and continuously and automatically update them, and also confidence in the platform, in the quality of the platform that we're um, get, uh, providing for our developers without having to manually intervene necessarily, right? Okay. Yeah, uh, so, so that, that was the outcome. That's the outcome we, we think can be achieved uh, through, through pipelines, through continuous delivery of your, of your platform. What I'm going to introduce now is uh, just, just some of the f in basic concepts around pipelines as to why pipelines. And then we'll go into talking about what are the open source CF pipelines which are available, what are the PCF pipelines available, and then like a quick summary of that. So that's sort of the uh, overall uh, talk we're going to do today. So, so let's take an example of an organization that might automate their CF environment where they would be like really focused on on saying, all right, we're not going to deploy CF or Bosch manually anymore. We are going to write some automation for it. We're going to make sure that we have automation in place for doing those tasks, right? And this is, this is an example of an actual customer. Uh, this is of an, uh, one of our customers who have who've gone through this process of trying to write automation uh, for their Cloud Foundry environments. So, th so what they did was uh, like they used Git Kit for storing all their manifest files, credentials, configuration files. So an example could be Bitbucket repositories or 
or something else. And then they wrote some automation scripts, in this case an example of Ansible playbooks, but you could use something else uh, as an approach to write, to install, deploy, and update your Bosch as well as, 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 well as Cloud Foundry, right? Um, and it, it was going pretty well for them in the sense that they were able to sort of, so they had this sort of workflow. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time on it. But really, they had a development box, and then they had their uh, production or development uh, environment. They would make some changes to dev box. They would push it out to the Git to Bitbucket, and then that would update their man Bosch manifest and ultimately deploy Bosch Rector CF or whatever the broker release. That were all worked in the sort of the happy path scenario. Also here in the the smiley face is the manual thing, and then the the current is like the automated way of doing it. All right, but, but what happened when something went wrong? What happened when something went wrong in one of the Bosch deployed uh, deployments or maybe in, at Bosch level itself? They would go into the, uh, the jump box, edit those Ansible scripts or playbooks, what they had, and updated their, uh, and triggered another set of uh, generated Bosch manifests. So it would update the Bosch manifest and then do a Bosch deploy, which is great. It fixed the problem. But, but now I got to make sure the engineer who, who fixed the problem goes back, updates their Bitbucket repositories, make sure that they're updated and good. Also make sure that this is not just for this environment, but all the other different environments, they have it consistently configured across all these different environments. Right? Now let's use a concourse ba pipeline-based workflow. I'm definitely biased towards concourse. I think you should use all things concourse for any kind of pipelines, right? Not just for Cloud Foundry, but any, anything, be from app development to operational uh, delivery pipelines, you should use concourse. But what is concourse? Concourse is a pipeline CI more than CD system, but it, it provides like a declarative configuration for, uh, for your pipelines, which means that I can take that declarative pipeline and move it anywhere. if run it on any concourse in the world. Um, it, the more important feature, though, is the repeatable builds. The repeatable builds allow you to say, all right, I'm going to run my pipeline once. I'm going to run my pipeline tw second time and third time. And I know those are all fresh, uh, in fresh deploys, fresh builds. And I know that there's no residue from the previous build. And I know that it, if it doesn't work, there's a particular change in that build which is not making it work. So just using concourse as a way to doing it, um, you, you, your happy path is still great. I still edit my manifests on development box. I trigger, uh, I, I commit those changes on, on the bit bucket, and that triggers the whole workflow where it runs the concourse pipelines and then updates the manifests and finally does a Bosch deploy. But what, what's more interesting is, is when things go wrong. Um, when things go wrong, I'm not editing that particular Ansible scripts on that particular jump box. But I'm really editing my manifest still on my dev box. I execute the task. If it runs fine, I just commit it. Right? So I have now ensured that I'm not having inconsistent configurations by just maintaining one place where I'm running things off and triggering things off. So I just wanted to like, give you a quick uh, view of it. I don't, we don't, I don't expect everyone to just follow the workflow right now and get it, but just the general idea of using pipelines and concourse pipelines for automation your, for your platform is, is the key message I think I want to send. So from now, I think now we're going to focus on first the open source CF pipelines. OK, so uh, for open source pipelines, here's an example. So for an open source pipeline, you have to build uh, the pipeline itself. So this example is very simple, three jobs. The first one is going to uh, install Bosch for you. The second one is going to up upload the stem cells, and the third one would install or update Cloud Foundry. Um, we've put the GitHub references for, for anything that you can look up throughout the presentation. They're, they're all referenced. Um, but let's go through this and focus a little bit more on, e on some of the subcomponents. So oh, before, before that whole pipeline runs, actually, um, what about the infrastructure, right? We, wanna, we have to uh, uh, configure the infrastructure before we actually uh, deploy Bosch Director. So there's a cool tool called Bosch Bootloader, Bubble for short. And um, again, open source available. Um, so the command bubble up will actually um, provision the infrastructure for you and deploy Bosch Director. 
So literally as simply as you see on the screen, by calling Bubble up with a certain set of credentials, that's what you need for AWS. Um, this also works for Google Cloud, and it will work soon for Azure as well. Um, and if optionally, you can create uh, load balancers as well. Just by running this command, you can do a Bosch login when it's done. So the infrastructure on, on your IaaS as well as Bosch Director, things that uh, before, you know, involved following a whole bunch of documentation and a whole bunch of steps. Um, bubble up, that command will output a file, a JSON file, our bubble state.json file that has a description of the infrastructure that it just um, provisioned, which you can store, you know, probably in a private repo would be a good place for it. And that bubble state JSON has all of the information, including your Bosch director uh, address and the credentials to get to it. So as you can see in the second box, um, to do that Bosch login, for, ever, for the uh, values of all of those parameters, we're using the bubble command, uh, assuming that that bubble state JSON file is in the same directory that we're working in, otherwise you point to it, but you can simply query for director address or username and password. And literally, uh, just by following those steps, you've, got, um, you've, you've logged into your Bosch in your newly set up environment. So it really is simple. So in terms of the pipeline, we create a, a job, a, a concourse job, that's going to ultimately call this bubble up um, command. It's gonna do it by executing a task. So that, even though you have to write the job, the task is provided uh, for you. It's available also in a community repository called CF Deployment Concourse Tasks. Um, and a task is simply uh, the execution of a script in an isolated environment with all the resources provided to it. So in this case, we wanna run that bubble up command that'll be provided to us in a script. Um, the isolated environment is gonna be a Docker file that's provided through Docker Hub that has, for example, the bubble binary. Um, and so that task.yaml file, which is what concourse is gonna interpret, the actual shell script that eventually calls the bubble up binary command and that Docker file are all provided for you and referenced through this task definition in CF Deployment Concourse Tasks repository. So the repository, this is what it looks like. So on the left-hand side, you can see the second task listed is the bubble up task. So on the right-hand side, we're digging into that direct directory. So it has the YAML file for concourse to read and the shell script to be executed. That shell script is what calls that bubble up binary command. And the YAML file is pointing to that Docker file that's provided through Docker Hub. So that's the whole definition. So your, your job just has to call this task. Now, we might wanna have a little bit of configuration, right? Because Bubble, as you can see, it's quite opinionated. It didn't ask us anything. It just set up our infrastructure and deployed Bosch Director. So there's an opportunity to um, tell uh, the Bubble Up task to um, reference some ops files, which are basically YAML, manifests that get merged into your Bosch manifests. So you supply that as an input resource, pointing it to a, a directory. There are some sample ops files inside of the same CF deployment concourse tasks repo inside of an operations directory. Things like, for example, scale to 1AZ, because the CF deployment that, that we'll talk about in a minute by default uh, follows a 3AZ configuration. So if you want to scale it down, you simply point to this ops file, and it'll deploy um, of single AZ uh, foundation for you. So this is what your Bosch definition would, the job definition would look like. This is, this is the example of the piece that you might have to add. So you can see the de declaration of the job. The first job in our, th in our three job pipeline is update Bosch. And you, you can see that it references the ops files uh, at the, near the bottom of the screen is the ops files uh, variable, which lists exactly which ops files we are choosing to run from that directory of, of uh, available operations files. You can also point that to your own operations directory and write your own um, variations of operations files. And you can see this, the environment variables that previously I'd showed you, you would run from the command line to, that are passed to the bubble up command itself. And at the end, that bubble state JSON file is stored. Also, you know, could put that in a private repository. But it really is that simple. That'll, that'll get you, um, Bosch director. So in summary, our example update Bosch job declares that CF deployment concourse tasks repository as a resource. It executes the bubble up 
task. That bubble up task script is going to call the actual bubble up command. Bubble up uses Terraform under the covers to set up the infrastructure either on AWS or Google for the moment, Azure soon. Um, and it also calls Bosch create env to deploy Bosch director. All by just executing that job with one mouse click. So that's easy, it's predictable, and it's repeatable. So what if you want more, a little more control over your IaaS? Once you call bubble up, uh, you've got your Bosch cloud config uh, created, so you could export that cloud config, you could edit that YAML file, and then you could update that uh, cloud config back up to your Bosch director. That's one way to do it. Uh, if you want uh, more control, you can not use bubble, just create the infrastructure yourself, create your own Terraform, and then call Bosch create env which is, again, what Bubble does under the coverage, right? So we move forward to um, our job. Our pipeline had three jobs. The second one was upload stem cells. So assuming that runs fine, let's focus on the update CF job, installer update CF. So how do you decide exactly you know, which components or which, sub, which uh, elastic runtime uh, subcomponent versions uh, we're running? Or sorry, Cloud Foundry application runtime components we're running. So, um, Previously, you might have used CF release uh, to define that. So this is a, a more flexible replacement for that. It has a canonical manifest to declare the different versions. Again, CF deployment uh, is an open source uh, GitHub repo that provides this for you. And it, it's just a, more readable, and it emphasizes security and production readiness by default. So that production readiness, for example, I mentioned that by default, you'll get a 3AZ deployment and you can use the ops file scale to zingle az.yaml to scale that down, but by default you do get that production ready 3az deployment. So that's all defined in CF deployment. Uh, so we create a job that's gonna call um, use CF deployment uh, for our Bosch manifest to deploy the, um, the runtime. Again, you can still use ops files as a way to configure uh, things at this point in the same way that we would have done it for the bubble up job, you can declare them at this point as well. And cost, custom uh, common configurations are included in that CF deployment repo. And finally, um, for credential management, uh, this is also leveraging um, Bosch 2.0 constructs that allow you, previously all the credentials were sort of in interpolated in the manifest file, and Bosch 2.0 uh, decoupled that, the credential store from the manifest file, so this is leveraging that. So uh, when the deployment runs, it'll store all of the credentials in a var store file separately. It generates strong passwords, certs, and keys, and it, it stores them separately. So you could put that um, in a private repo or a cred hub or something like that. Awesome. So thank you, uh, Cora. Um, so that, that was about the open source pipelines. Um, I'm going to quickly describe sort of what the PCF pipelines look like. There are two sort of benefits to this, uh, knowing this one. If you're a PCF customer, it's great. You know what pipelines to use. But the other are these pipelines have been used by uh, several customer scenarios at this point, and they have a level of maturity that you can ado adopt those patterns even in the open source world. So I think it's really extremely valuable to understand them. Um, you could One, either you could download them on network.pivotal.io. You can sign up and access those pipelines there. Or you could uh, access the PCF pipelines repo, uh, which has all these different um, different pipelines available. So what, what are PCF pipelines? PCF pipelines are for installing and upgrading of Posh as well as Pebble Cloud Foundry as well as, um, as, well as uh, the other data services like RabbitMQ, Redis, MySQL, whatever that be. It adheres to a certain reference architecture that's been defined by Pebble by saying things like, as, as Cora mentioned, like multi-AZ environments. Uh, but also having a particular number of instances for, say, the cloud controller or the router, having a sort of a more HA configuration for that. It, the pipelines are available for AWS, GCP, Azure, and uh, vSphere. Um, they also have the option of offline options, which is really more for the government organizations where they really want everything locked down and nothing to be coming outside the, the organization. Um, it has other, so other th important things, but really, for me, the, the, the most interesting one is the jobs for wiping environments. Um, 
as you would see, as I'll go through the uh, the pipeline itself. So this is the install pipeline. You'll see so there's something called the Vipe environment job, which is which is almost even before the create infrastructure really. But what the Vipe environment uh, job is super useful for is that all right, I create my infrastructure, I see something going wrong, and I don't I don't think that's the right way to configure. I can use the Vipe environment and it'll just wipe out your environment and start from scratch. Or you deployed Bosch Director, you deployed uh, your Cloud Foundry, and now you're still not happy with it, do a Bosch delete deployment, it'll do a Bosch delete deployment, and also remove the infrastructure again for you. I think it's a pretty cool pattern to have in, as part of your pipeline. Uh, it's also a little risky one, so not really expose that for anyone to click and wipe out your environment. Um, the, other, the other jobs here are kind of similar to what we had in our open source pipeline. Uh, the one additional one here is the create infrastructure. Um, the pipeline we showed in the open source one had like update Bosch, update CF, uh, stem cells, and uh, update CF. Here you have a job which is create infrastructure, which really uses Terraform for say AWS or GCP, uh, to uses Terraform to bootstrap all your infrastructure uh, required for, for setting up Bosch and Cloud Foundry. Uh, after that, it's really configure and deploy director jobs are just uh, setting up your Bosch. And then up upload and deploy your T are just about uploading and setting up your Cloud Foundry runtime. You, you can have sort of similar, uh, similar patterns for installing, say, RabbitMQ, Redis, MySQL. Uh, so th this is sort of a repeatable pattern which you can use across other deployments as well. The upgrade pipelines are, are quite simple. They, they, they release something called the upgrade tile pipelines, which are like a generic upgrade uh, pipeline. Tile is just nothing but a Bosch deployment, but converted into a little more fancy and easier to use sort of interface. But really, at the end of the day, these are each of them are like Rabbit, ERT, and MySQL are just uh, Bosch deployments. Um, and what, what the good thing here is that I have something called a regulator, which is really a way for me to say, all right, every 30 minutes, run for something new. If there's a new version, go pull it up for me. Go fetch it up and get, it, uh, get the new version. It, then it has two inputs, so it has like the tile and the schedule, so either every 30 minutes or if there is a, a new version of the tile. Um, it, again, it does the upload and stage tile, and then uh, the apply changes is really the Bosch deploy. Um, the additional ben bit about apply changes is that if, if I configure all my, say, three deployments, say, RabbitMQ, ERT, and MySQL, if I run apply changes once, I can deploy all of those three deployments at once. So that's, that's pretty interesting because what you could do is uh, set up your pipelines in a way where everything stops at the second job. Once it's all staged and ready to go, you click one, apply changes, and all your sort of several Bosch deployments will go update all the different components at once. And then lastly, it's the upgrade build pack pipelines. It looks extremely complex, but it's actually pretty simple. It's just uh, all the system build packs, so right from Go to Java to uh, Ruby to binary, all of them follow some of the same structure from a regulator to staging those build packs and then um, uh, ultimately promoting those build packs in your CF environment. All right, so those were uh, like the, the pipelines we talked about today, the open source ones and the PCF ones. Those are like the basic starting out pipelines. There have been some really advanced patterns as well built by uh, some, some Pivotal uh, teams as well as the customers in pairing with the customers. Um, the first one is really the YAML patch. It's kind of similar to ops files um, without YAML patches, imagine that, so there's a team which maintains PCF pipelines, they're building and, and releasing new versions of the pipelines, but you're using those pipelines and you have some customizations you, you wanna add to those pipelines. And that makes them your own sort of Cloud Foundry pipelines, right? Now what this means is that when, they, when, when the team who's building these pipelines originally release new versions of these pipelines, how do I kind of make that merge, right? I, I run, run into the compatibility issues I, either I don't make my customizations, which is which doesn't make sense, or I I don't have compatibility challenges. I don't know where the where the problem. If there's a problem, I don't know which which where is it. Either in my customizations, or in my on the PCF pipelines. So with YAML patches, um, what what really you can do is uh, you can have these YAML patches, or similar to ops files, you have these 
files or set of YAMLs which describe that customization you need. And then every time there's a new version of the pipeline, you apply those patches to your to that version of the pipeline, and you stay in sync with the latest, but also have your own customizations. I introduce this because I think this is useful for even in the open source world, where you're trying to say, all right, I have these set of environments. I have the development environment, I have the engineering environment, and maybe have the production environment. And then I have certain customizations for production, but which may not apply to my dev or to my sandbox environments. And then, OK, no? All right. So the, the second advanced topic uh, really is around everything we spoke about today was about single environment. What, what about how do I build pipelines in a way which I can use for multiple CF environments? And this could be for different reasons. You want your, uh, you have one data center, or you may have more than one data center. You may have different geographical locations. You may have different development and production environments. So you may have multiple CF environments. Um, and what really this is describing is, is an approach or a pattern of using bill of materials where I define the things that I'm providing as a platform, and I'm defining what versions they're at. So when there is a new version of those, I release that in my development and my production environments. So really here, if you see the, the inputs to concourse here are uh, either I make some configuration changes, or I make some pipeline script changes, or maybe there's a new tile, or maybe there are new container images. Those all go to my sandbox environment. I try everything there. Once I feel confident, and I may go through a few iterations there, Let's just like app development, right? As you write code for it, you might have more new changes to your product. You test those out in development, you make sure they're good, and then you release, can, you release the, that, those, that bill of materials with those versions to your dev environments, where you feel great. If it's all gone good, then I can go ahead and do that same thing for production, right? So this is actually a more simpler version. They had a little more, there's a more complex version of this as well. But I think this is a, again, I say it as an advanced topic in the sense that it's once you get more maturity with your pipelines, you can start exploring these patterns, because you're definitely going to need them for sure. All right, I think that's about it. This clicker has stopped working. To you. So, yeah, so takeaways. So main takeaways from this talk. Number one, installing an update Cloud Foundry has become really easy. Take advantage and enjoy it. It's pretty cool. Um, and it's really in the long run, especially as your organization grows and matures, the, 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 you know, the more foundations you're maintaining, it's really the only way to ensure that you are providing the most consistent, secure, yeah. and up-to-date platform for your organization. And finally, continuous automation of Cloud Foundry. It's, rel it's relatively new. Uh, I mean, you have enterprise customers using it, for sure. Uh, but it's relatively yeah. new. Uh, and it's rapidly growing and improving. So stay engaged with the community. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, please. Yep. Oh, That'll be uploaded, but it's all the resources we presented. Yep. So. Questions? OK. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Yes. Uh, we, we are in. We know the GoPatch syntax that is used uh, when patching uh, Bosch manifests. Does, is uh, YAML patch the same? But it looks like it's different. Uh, what is the first tool you Go mentioned? Well, um, the sit syntax uh, used by op ops files mm -hmm. comes from a, a library mm -hmm. that is called GoPatch. So uh we call that GoPatch. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what, is it the same that... Uh, it, it could be using the same construct. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure whether it's using Go patches specifically. Uh, okay, so it's not. Sean, do you want to answer this one? <laughs> 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 but it's not. So, a d different thing. Yep. Because uh, with Bosch interpolate, you, you, you can do the thing with Go patch. It's uh, mm -hmm. fundamentally the, the same. It's mm -hmm. uh, go patches is just uh, the same thing as git patches uh, okay. or stand up patches. Might be the alternative solution. Mm. Yeah. And Sean can tell you more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Any other questions? Just more. Uh, thank you for the for the presentation. Uh, just one question about uh, OpenStack. Mm -hmm. Just to know if there are some uh, some works uh, currently on on this uh, this provider. 
Um, I believe there are pipelines for the, P the PCF pipelines for OpenStack as well. Um, I'm not so sure of the, so the open source work. It was not on the slide, I guess. So. Sorry? It was not on the slide. Uh, I okay. think so, that's why. Good point. Uh, it's, in, it's in the works, I think. Uh, but that's why I think it's not on the slide. That's yeah, some of the, some of the artifacts are in the pipeline. So if you look on, yeah. Git, on GitHub, you'll see some of the, the scripts for it. Um, but I don't think it's at the same level of maturity as everything else, is it? Yeah, so get in there. Thank you for the presentation. It was very interesting. Great. So um, my question is, how long do these pipelines typically typically run? Because it seems like you every time you do something, it seems like you uh, deploying you make a full blown deployment of Cloud Foundry. So is there a way to speed up things? Because I think the feedback loop is important and it should be uh, you know smaller. Is there maybe a way to before you promote? Uh, the build to just have a more lightweight deployment of Cloud Foundry at first before you start, you know, actually having a full-blown deployment of it? Um, that, that's a really good point. Um, there are some ways of making sure that you're, one way is you, you're, when you make smaller changes, at the end of the day, it's doing a Bosch deploy of CF. Um, if, if you're making smaller changes, it may just go through the rest of it and really take a very small time to uh, make a change. The other way is what we haven't mentioned here is that sort of the smoke tests part of it. If you feel that the smoke tests are, if you have continuously running smoke tests, then you may not make changes uh, a lot of times, right? You may make it only once a week instead, and that may help sort of reduce the frequency of them. But yeah, not, yeah, that's, that's one way of it. Allocator and a virtual machine every time. So this is just sort of pipelining what exists, but as the deployment of Cloud Foundry actually gets faster because of product improvements, then it's obviously the to feel it here too. So that, yeah. is, that is definitely a, a pain that we know we're yeah. trying to address. I, I agree. I have a, another concern that we faced when building the Orange pip pipelines for their mm -hmm. Cotonry OSS deployment, is that the versions of uh, Bosch releases might be specified in the manifest when you're using the standard task for Bosch deploy. And that's a pain because I, mm -hmm. as, a, as an operator, are trying to test drive a, a new set of versions. Uh, into the uh, sandbox the, the, the environment, I just want to specify the new versions into a, into a deployment manifest, not in my pipeline. I don't want to update the pipeline every time I, I have something new to test. So, uh, what is the state uh, of your, 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 the work you, you presented? Are the, the versions of the uh, Bosch releases and stem cells defined in the pipeline or in the Bosch deployment? Um, I think the, the pipelines here specifically have the concourse deployments and they do specify like the Bosch versions. That's in the, con the, the actual Bosch manifest. But I feel those can be abstracted out to concourse variables which you, which you update whenever your parameters file when you want to update those versions. And that, that can trigger your concourse uh, pipelines which could trigger the, the deployments. Basically, you could param param parametri parameterize your Bosch versions, which you want to update. Was that? Uh, no, no, no. I, I, um, I want, I, I, as an operator, I want the Bosch deployment manifest to describe the the exact state of what I'm deploying. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't want the uh, concourse resources to fix the exact version that is actually deployed. Mm. You, you don't want it that way, you want it in the... Um, no, it's, it's just that the, the concourse task was uh, forcing us to, to, to tell the, that we, we are deploying, uh, for example, uh, uh, PostgreSQL uh, Bosch release in the version uh, 45, okay. uh, specified as the, the concourse resource, and not as the... the, the the, the, the okay. versions from the, the Bosch deployment. Hmm. Is, um, is it still true? Maybe, maybe it's, it's not the case anymore. Right? Um. I, I think that's in CF deployment. If you want, we can... Yeah, we can, we can definitely talk after mm -hmm. just making sure yeah, if, uh, well, others are left, but still. 
If I, are there any other, other questions? No? Awesome. Thank you all for coming for the last session. I hope you had a good CF Summit.